Okay guys, uh, welcome to the video where we will learn how to make Caterpillar and the Leaf or uh, most of you might have heard this game as Snake Senzi or some sort of a game where a snake actually uh, wanders around. Okay, a snake wanders around, eats something within a given boundary and until unless it touches one of the boundaries, he will keep eating, keep growing and the game uh, gets more and more difficult. Okay, uh, so in this video, uh, let me walk you through how we are going to go through this. Uh, initially, I will explain uh, how the exact logic works okay, through a flowchart. Uh, after that, we will walk through uh, components of code. Okay? So components of codes we will work on uh, each of them. Once this particular flowchart is explained, you will see that okay. Uh, then we have to make a function like this and like this. So we will deal with all of those. And uh, towards the end, I will uh, run the game okay, uh, on my system. Other than that, this entire thing we will explain in the video in the description. Okay, in the description, you will get uh, the documentation portions for these two. Okay, uh, the code, the working code dot i p n uh, y b. Okay, i Python notebook uh, file for the game which is running. Okay, so in case you have a coding problem or Let's say you want to tweak something in the game, something like that. Uh, some suggestions for tweaking the game will be in the document itself. Uh, you can just take this particular document, download it and run it on your system and modify the game. Okay. So you don't need to type everything which is in the document anyway. So the final code will be here. Okay. Once you uh, understand the components, we will have the codes which is there in the document is there in the component as well. Okay. So don't have to worry about that. Uh, I think it would take you close to 20 to 25 minutes uh, to understand this entire flow. What I would ideally suggest you guys to do again, there's no assignment which is compulsory for this is once you have this particular code and you understand the components, try to change things uh, time to time. I mean, uh, if let's say the game that we are going to build will have a, a caterpillar that will eat items. One thing you can do is that you can create multiple items at a time or you can give a counter here or you can put some boulders okay or some particular block of the screen you can just say that okay you cannot go there or something like that okay so there are multiple modification of these kind of games which are there uh, so you can try to modify the game into one of those but the basic version will be given to you directly okay so let's jump directly to the documentation where you can see how the code works okay uh, let's see this particular thing now uh, what basically happens, uh, just as description in case somebody don't know, uh, we will have four arrows, okay, to move left, right, uh, up and down, okay, uh, to steer a caterpillar uh, and around the screen and make it eat leaves, these kind of leaves. We'll see how to draw these as well. Each leaf gives you a point which will be shown here. It will increase by plus 10. You can change it according to you. Uh, but it will also make the caterpillar bigger. So if this is our caterpillar, it will add on a particular tail to its unit. Okay, One unit length will increase. Uh, after that, uh, it will uh, keep increasing. The speed of the uh, caterpillar will keep increasing. We will have a plus one speed every time it eats one of the leaves. Okay, uh, So it will become more and more faster and it's harder to prevent it from hitting one of these boundaries. Okay, So these are the boundaries. It doesn't need to help keep the caterpillar inside the game window or game is over. So if you hit this particular thing or this, the game is over. Okay, so that's how this particular game works. Now, in this particular, this is uh, how your screen is going to look. These things will keep appearing at various location. We'll use a random function to generate the location of these things. This snake will be controlled by you based on your keyboards. Okay, we'll see how we add uh, changes in this particular diagram or how you can move these things using keyboards. Uh, there are functions for that particular thing and this will be the counter score again this particular 20 it's also not a number it's again a graphic since the entire thing is working on the same uh, interface this thing also has to be added through the graphics these things will need to uh, do the basic computation that python can do and keep changing these number as soon as something happens okay uh, increasing difficulties will actually increase because as soon as you uh, touch this particular thing there will be a trigger so in that trigger, we can increase the length, increase the size, get another uh, image somewhere else. We can call this thing and add the value and all those things will happen. So we'll see how event functions all around here. Okay, so this is the basic flow chart and uh, let me just walk you through once here and then we will see each and every step. 
so the first thing is create the properties of the caterpillar and the leaf okay whenever i say caterpillar turtle it means the caterpillar or the snake which you are thinking of so we will first create the properties by properties it means that there are certain things that uh, need to add for example caterpillar and leaf both have uh, separate shapes so you'll need to add shapes for them along with that you will have a lot of things like uh, the length should be keep on increasing so this particular caterpillar should have a variable in the length uh, the leaf just to look like a leaf if you see in the last page here we are tried to make it look as close to a leaf possible right so you can put a square if you find that okay this is very difficult you can just make a simple square or a circle here but ideally we would like to show you how you can create a leaf it's just uh, you put out some points and draw it all over okay so we'll see that once that thing is done then set the variables uh, values into variables for example the speed of caterpillar size of caterpillar the score the new locations all those things you need to define the variables which will be used in the game after that you move the caterpillar forward you need to have a function will keep moving the caterpillar forward because throughout the game the caterpillar will keep moving throughout the time right until some instruction is given has the caterpillar reached the leaf you have to check that particular thing so for that what we will do is that we know the current location of the leaf and we will check if uh, because every location can be expressed in terms of x and y right so in this particular thing if you remember from the first session we had discussed that okay this thing is 400 cross 400 pixels of uh, size for this particular thing and this is your origin 0, 0. so if you let's say have a particular food here uh, and let's say its location is x comma y you have to keep checking that as soon as the caterpillar moves in this direction is the caterpillar anywhere in the range of x plus minus let's say uh, some delta plus y plus minus some delta okay this delta will be how close you want the snake to come to eat this particular thing so for example let's say uh, if you want like okay this is your uh, circle if your delta is let's say 20 units so 20 pixels up 20 pixels down left and right if the snake comes anywhere close to this boundary this particular thing will be assumed to be eaten if you keep it way too low then the pixels since our snake is also having some thickness and all those things you don't have to worry about such things when you do basic programming but with graphic what happens is your snake starts with some level and it closes at some pixel okay so the length breadth all those things matter so just to keep it easy for the visuals you can uh, we will actually use 20 if you increase the 20 by 50 let's say so your uh, item would be here and even if the snake moves from here to here the item will vanish because it assume that okay it went around 50 units towards it so it would have eaten that okay so that particular thing is something you can play around with okay so once that particular thing is there every moment as soon as i move from one unit from here to here i will check okay have i eaten the leaf have i reached near the leaf if it is no then has the caterpillar move outside the screen okay so if i have not reach, uh, reached the leaf have i touched any boundary okay so this will both of these are the key events right so if i have not touched the boundary and i have not eaten the leaf i'll go back and move one more step right if i have uh, eaten the leaf or come close enough then move the leaf increase the size increase the speed okay so i will delete the particular uh, leaf which i have just eaten i will increase the size of the snake i will increase the speed of the snake right so all those things will be triggered as soon as i reach the particular leaf uh just a second okay so now uh just one second yeah if this thing happens after that i will check that okay as soon as you have eaten the leaf i'll again check have i moved outside the screen no i will have to move the leaf by moving the leaf i will produce another leaf on the screen if i have not touched the screen yet i will go back and the same thing will happen this is the game loop okay most of the uh, basic games okay i will not go for uh, advanced games that you guys play but some of the basic games that you used to play in the basic uh, mobiles like uh, nokia and samsung the one with the keypads and stuff they had a particular loop okay even the uh, even the most popular game okay i will say most popular not most profitable uh, the game that actually comes uh, with the dinosaur and certain plants that actually come that he has to hop through and some uh, birds that he has to uh, duck from okay the game that you can play on your google chrome when your internet is down even in your mobiles that particular game also have a loop this guy will keep uh, moving forward and this particular thing keeps coming from time to time at random heights and at random distances so if you learn how to make this particular thing a very good project for you for your fifth project if you are making in gaming would actually be this particular thing right so this is something very interesting and if you if you really see 
uh, for a limited target, this particular thing is at random, it will move as long as you want. At the same time, if you see the Mario Brothers game, right? So it has a particular fixed pattern. It's like, okay, after this particular thing, the castle will come and the game is finished, right? So in this particular thing, the game loop is there, but it is this long and there is an exit. Okay. Here, the game loop is there, but it will keep rotating. So this particular path will keep on coming till you uh, finish the game or you can, they will never finish. You lose the game on a particular score. So this is the game in which you just have to keep scoring. And these are the games which have some termination. Okay. So for these sort of games, this particular loop is the key loop and it's called as gaming loop. Okay. Uh, let's move on to C. Uh, the first thing again, open your uh, Python idle or your Jupyter notebook, whatever you're coding in with. After that particular thing, we need two modules here. The first module, definitely we need to draw a lot of things. So we need this particular thing as turtle. Uh, as t and then we need to import random for those who don't know uh, random is a function uh, a library that provide a lot of functions which will generate random numbers between 0 to 1 or if you let's say want to generate between 400 to minus 400 because let's say that's or let's say 200 to minus 200 okay because that's our range so for x i can go here it's 0 here total length is 400 so i can go maximum from minus 200 to plus 200 Okay, same for the y coordinate maximum plus 200 minus minimum 200. So this is the range. So if I have to generate something close to this, what I can do is if I have a value, let's say zero between zero to one, I can just multiply it with uh, minus one to the power n n can be anything times 200. Okay, so this particular thing would let's ignore this for a while zero to one into 200. So if my value is zero, I'll get a zero. If it is one, it, I'll get 200. Okay. And if it's, let's say 0.5, so I will get a uh, hundred, any value that actually comes here will actually be converted into a whole number between zero to 200 and some decimals. You can ignore the decimal by uh, casting out this particular thing. So you can generate the values which we require from this particular function very easily. Yeah. Uh, and in this particular code, uh, T dot PG yellow, it's basically to put the background color into yellow and, uh, why we put it yellow or whatever color that we actually have to put, you will understand that particular thing very soon. Uh, when we actually disappears or let's make things invisible. For example, uh, when let's say a start comes, you click on this particular thing and things appear, right? As soon as this particular thing crashes here, you need to make all of these invisible. So what we do is that we actually convert the color of all the items which are there. That is basically your uh, caterpillar, your leaf and the number. All of them turn into the color of the background. So they are still there, but it gets invisible, right? So that is the whole uh, idea behind putting this particular color or you can make it for a particular color that you feel is more uh, towards the game. Okay. So let's see the next segment. So you imported the modules. Now we create the uh caterpillar turtle okay and from now on whenever i say caterpillar it means caterpillar turtle itself right so let's try to understand this particular thing uh caterpillar equals to t dot turtle now if you realize the particular turtle uh the this t is actually the turtle module and when i say dot turtle this actually initiates that okay there is a some sort of a diagram or a graphic unit here we don't know more about it so far but we will as soon as we learn more about this thing. So it's just like your class and object concept, right? So we have created a blank form. It can have various uh, shape, color, speed, all those things will be there that we will mention now. But this is basically you creating a particular empty empty graphic unit, right? So caterpillar dot shape. So the shape will be square. So initially it will be a square shape. Uh, caterpillar dot color equals to red. Okay, so our caterpillar will be red. You can change all of these uh, basic things yourself. Don't change the square shape, but you can change the color. Uh, initial speed would be zero because you don't want the caterpillar to move before the game has started. Okay, so initial speed will be zero. So we have assigned the speed to zero. Caterpillar dot pen up. So we have drawn this much and pen up. Caterpillar dot height turtle. So this particular thing, this caterpillar which is there on the screen initially. Okay, we have all the code that we are doing is actually for uh, when the game starts and this high turtle, the caterpillar will be there towards the origin. Okay. Here the caterpillar will be, but it will not be visible because we have hidden that particular thing. Okay. I hope that is clear. Let's move a little lower. 
let's see what's the fourth portion here okay sorry the screen is moving a bit faster okay now we have to create the leaf it will be exactly the same thing but the only difference is here again we created a blank graphic uh, class uh, now the thing is this particular shape okay you can put a square shape if you put a square uh, square your leaf will come in form of a square you can try it out particular thing what we are trying to do is that your leaf will actually have a shape based on these items okay so when you actually give four or five different points like this it will try to join all of them right so what it happens is let's say i'll give you a brief idea of this thing so it's 0 comma 0 then 14 comma 2 so a lot higher but close to here okay similar to this then 18 comma 6 that is a little bit in this direction a little more in this direction here and then 20 comma 20 so it will be close to here and then 6 that is let's say half of 14 close to here and 18 so more like here and then 2 and 14 so 14 is this much so let's say this and this okay so if i have given these points you can understand what type of a shape i'm trying to draw okay so this is the leaf that we are trying to draw right now see there is nothing called as a leaf in the graphic uh, modules it's just that i am building a shape like this okay so it's just still connecting pixels it's just that all of this will be the leaf of uh, the shape of the leaf whenever i call that okay give me a leaf just like i call uh, give me a snake it will give me a square for the leaf it will give me something like this okay which is close to the leaf which we want right then t dot register shape so what we are doing is that in turtle we are registering this shape leaf into leaf shape leaf shape is this particular thing so we are registering that whenever we call this leaf bring me this particular shape which i have mentioned here okay so we are basically making this particular thing accessible to all the other functions which we will require it later on okay so we have registered this particular shape in turtle after that leaf dot shape leaf so this particular module that we have said this particular thing we have declared and then we have told turtle that okay this particular thing is how we define a leaf then we have to tell what is the shape of this particular object that we created so that is leaf so as soon as i say leaf turtle will say okay i don't have a shape called as leaf i have square rectangle circles i don't have leaf so maybe the user has defined something like this so we will check in that particular registered and there it will say that okay yeah this is the shape which the leaf wants so this is the shape that the user wants the reason why we are registering this particular thing is that we will use this particular shape multiple times and that is why we are not just putting it for the very first time it's a good practice to keep all the shapes and all the items that you're using multiple times at a single place and register that okay now leaf color equals to green makes sense leaf dot pen up so leaf is done okay i've given the shape and the color there's no point of giving a speed here because the leaf is not going to move okay then hide uh, turtle and then leaf speed equals to zero so we have initially made the speed zero here again for the leaf now see the leaf speed will not actually change this uh, speed for the caterpillar will actually change later on but the speed for the leaf will not change we have uh, hidden this particular thing as well because when the game starts we don't want anybody to see the leaf as well okay so i think this much is there after that we have okay now the text portion so if you remember the initial uh, screen we had the this the leaf and there was a score here so that is what we are going to make here so game started equals to false this is a boolean variable which will keep checking for, because we need to check if the user has clicked on the screen and the game should start or not so initially let's define it as false text turtle okay you can just write it text as well it's just that text turtle equals to t dot turtle we have created another object called as text text turtle dot write press space to start okay so this particular thing will appear when the game starts on the screen it will appear that okay uh, this particular thing is printed here press space to start okay so text turtle dot write this particular thing now just like we give dot shape okay that is for the objects in which we uh, objects which we require in certain shapes right so just like that if you want a graphic that needs to be in like alphabets you can just put dot right and the alphabets that you want alignment font all those things you can change okay now 
if you see this right is similar to what we did for the shapes right so just like there in the first one we just mentioned the shape which was already there in the second one we had to create the shape and in the third one when it comes to text we need to tell exactly what the text will be okay and then text dot height turtle okay so this thing is also hidden now similarly this particular score thing score turtle equals to t dot turtle uh, score turtle dot height turtle again that particular uh, ahead pointer that you have that will be hidden uh, scored underscore uh, score underscore turtle the same thing dot speed equals to zero so this thing will also not move it will be here so far in the five steps what we have done we have made sure that all of these things appear this particular thing will appear this thing will appear this thing will appear and there will be a click uh, bait here okay that will say press space to start okay all these places this thing will work the screen currently the screen is this the background is yellow this thing is red this thing is green okay this thing uh, we haven't mentioned so by default it's black okay or you can actually uh, change the color uh, across the font you also have a option to change the color but it's up to you and this thing uh, this text will again also be black okay now what you need to see here is that if you run this particular thing now nothing will actually happen because we have not called any of these things okay we have stated that okay this is all that has to be done but we have not actually initiated anything so nothing will actually appear on the screen if you just put this much and run so let's see when will we actually do that okay so let's move on to the sixth part okay so placeholder functions now the concept of placeholder functions uh, i think most of you already know if you know python or any other programming language uh, but even for those who know placeholders are something that most of us don't usually use because the coding practices that we have just ask us to like do one function or two function at a time so we just uh, define the function code everything define the function code everything and run everything but whenever you are building a major project regardless uh, be it a game project machine learning project any sort of project and you have too many components and by too many i means 20 to 200 who knows so these many components you cannot code everything on your own more likely there will be a team of players and that's something that you should learn that whenever you're doing a project multiple people are working on something this is how exactly you can do this so you define all of these functions you don't uh, mention the code for any of these you define that outside window pass game over pass all of these names and pass and you know the functionality of each of them okay so what happens is that let's say i am coding the portion in which the new new leaf should be produced if the snake has cut this particular thing so as soon as i uh, do this particular thing i need to make sure that i use this particular function which somebody else is going to code right so i will do one thing that okay as soon as this thing is there i will run this particular code right the thing is i i don't know how this code works i don't need to know that particular thing because i am focusing on this particular part itself so whenever you are working in a team or even when you are working uh, individually this is a good practice that okay you define all the major functions here so when you are doing let's say one particular operation you can just mention that okay this will happen and this will happen i'll just name the function and assume that this function works later on whoever whether it's you or your teammate has to code this particular thing can directly code this particular thing you don't need to know where it is used and the user doesn't need to know how does it work okay so that particular thing gives you abstraction and that is something which is very much uh, required in every project that you do okay and this will be very common question for all of you in your interviews whenever you sit for that okay how did so many people work on a single project when there was only let's say uh, one single code with 1500 lines how did you uh, manage or distribute the work this is how you distribute the work okay so let's move on to the seventh part okay so this is the game start function so this is what we will call when the game will start okay so define game uh, start game okay so we'll call this particular function and the game will start global game start if you remember this particular thing we have already defined and this particular thing has been defined as a false initially okay now global start if game started if this value is true then this particular thing will return back to this function everything is working fine if not then start the game so if the game is already started do nothing if the game is not started i mean game uh, started is false then start the game okay so whenever you call this function if the game is running it doesn't matter 
If it is not, then it will start. Okay. Score equals to zero. That's something that we need to define. Now, this score and that text score that we defined earlier, these are two different things, right? This is a variable that was a graphic. Just remember that particular thing. Text turtle dot clear. Okay. So all this particular thing which was on the screen, it will be cleared out. Caterpillar speed initially you have to give something so two. Caterpillar length something has to give so three. Now the shape of the caterpillar is a square and the length is three. So what will happen? This thing will be created. Now caterpillar dot shape size. Okay. So in this shape size, you have to tell all these things. So you have to give uh, this particular thing as caterpillar length. And this is a open variable. So we can keep changing this particular thing. And this is actually something which will be used by many functions. Whenever I add uh, eat that particular leaf, this particular variable will be changed, right? So the uh, shape size will actually keep on depending on this particular thing. So it will keep on changing. Now, uh, caterpillar dot show turtle. So now we will have the particular uh, snake on the screen, right? So everything is cleared out. I know the speed. I know the length. All these things are known. Now my snake will appear. Okay. Now uh, display score as slow. Now this display score has not been defined yet. Okay. The only thing which I know about this is from here that there is a function called as display score and I have to give the current score. How this thing works, I don't care right now. Okay. That is somebody else's work or even my work. I'll do it later on. Uh, just a second. Yeah. Okay. So that is uh, how all of this works out. That you don't need to necessarily know all the components. Just one second. The screen is actually a bit. Yeah. Okay. So now you know that. Okay. My caterpillar has uh, shown, and now I have to uh, this particular thing. Show the score. These two are done. Then I have to place the leaf. Okay. The leaf will uh, place the leaf will put the leaf at some particular location. And it will make sure that the leaf is visible. Right now, the leaf is not visible. Okay. So that much is done. We have our snake on the screen. We have the score zero on the screen. And we have the leaf on the screen. Right. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, let's see the next component here. Okay. Now let's get moving. As you know, uh, the caterpillar has to keep running, it cannot stop. So, how do we write that particular function that makes sure that the caterpillar that we have on the screen? keeps moving in a particular direction to check that particular thing. We have caterpillar dot forward caterpillar. Okay. Uh, just one second here. So uh, caterpillar, this is the graphic. Okay. So uh, caterpillar dot forward. So we have to keep moving forward, keep moving forward with what speed caterpillar speed. Okay. So this particular thing has defined. Okay. At what speed the caterpillar needs to run. Now, next thing what I have to check if caterpillar dot distance between the leaf. Okay. So caterpillar dot distance from which thing the leaf is less than 20. Okay. So if the leaf comes within 20 pixels of the caterpillar. Okay. This is not the distance measure. This, the, we are measuring these things in pixels. So if the caterpillar comes 20 pixels close to the particular leaf, place leaf. Okay. So we'll place the leaf again. Caterpillar length equals to caterpillar plus one. So the length will increase by one. Caterpillar shape size. Then again, we have, we are just updating this because we have already increased the length, right? Then caterpillar speed equals to caterpillar speed plus one. Okay. So we have increased the speed. We have increased the length. Okay. And we have replaced. First thing that we need to do is place the new leaf. Okay. So this particular place leaf is placing the leaf somewhere else. This particular condition meets that the leaf is eaten. Then place the leaf somewhere else. Increase the length of the caterpillar. These two lines make sure of that. Increase the speed. Then increase the score and then display the score on the screen. Right. So all the steps that needs to be done as soon as I eat some leaves are taken care of in this particular portion. Then if outside window. Okay. So again, this function is not defined, but we will assume that this somehow finds out whether the Caterpillar is within the window or not. If it is outside the window, game over. Now again, this is a function. We don't know how it works, but that particular function makes sure that the game is over and then break. Okay, so we will finish the game there. So this is how the caterpillar keeps moving and things happen. Next thing, bind and listen. Now, 
all of this is done if you keep assuming and guys this is very important if you assume that all the functions which we have called so far works your game is done okay so we will keep working on this particular thing uh, the loop is there while true so it will keep moving the new leaf will come it is not outside the boundary so this particular thing is the game loop okay so i come near this particular thing if i'm nowhere near the uh, let's say leaf i'm running around this condition will be false this condition will be false i will keep running okay if i come somewhere close to the leaf okay if i come somewhere close to the leaf this condition is true and the leaf will be placed some place else my length will increase by 1 and i will keep running right okay and the same thing will happen again and again if by mistake i touch the boundary this particular condition will happen game will be over done everything that you need to do is over the game is finished only thing left is you have to uh, check if the game has started okay so this by uh, at this particular point your game is finished okay now what you are trying to do is that all these functions that you have coded right so all those things you need to now define okay so far you have assumed by if i say game over the game is over how it happens you don't care so if i say game over game is over so the entire game is finished at this particular point right now uh, let's see how this particular thing works and this is something that you didn't learn in the first video t dot on key start game comma space now this particular thing is very important we'll use it very frequently t is basically uh, calling turtle on key if something is pressed start the game if space is pressed now start game has to be a particular function okay so it will do this particular action if this thing is done on the key okay and then if this thing is done then t dot listen this basically means that okay then wait for the next instruction and here we say t dot main loop okay so this is exactly what's happening there is that i am waiting for the game to start and it will only start the start game function that we defined earlier will only be initiated when you press the space button okay so as soon as you uh, press the space button the start game uh, from let's say segment 7 to 8 will run which is basically the entire game okay and then we will uh, keep listening because we have more action moving the snake all of this will actually need to be uh, recorded so the user will tell me okay move left move right go up go down all those things need to be recorded and for that we are listening right okay uh, so once this is over your game is finished everything is working and you can test your code and check if there is some sort of an error but it's not over the reason is we are assuming that all these functions that we have defined has already been created which has not okay so we need to now create those things but basically the game portion of the things is over now we just have to uh, explain the functioning okay of outside window let's say how do we check that particular thing so we need to define all of those but the actual game is over now outside window now the thing is you have you know that your window sizes is at this point this is 0,0 and your minimum uh, as you can go till max uh, minus 200x you can go till 200 maximum you can go to 200 maximum of y and minus 200 so you cannot have the snake at uh, 252, some y okay because that will be outside the boundary it will game over or you can't have it in the minus direction less than minus 200 as well same for the y so that is exactly what you have to check if the current location will actually have uh, within the boundary points or some something outside in that case the game is over right so uh, left wall equals to t minus t dot window width okay so window width will basically give you uh, the 400 right if you are changing the width it will change accordingly because you can actually do those things as well but you don't need to worry about just assume that right now it's fixed 400 cross 400 okay so 400 cross 400 window width minus t so minus 400 by 2 because my total width this particular thing is 400 but since i'm starting at the center i need to make sure it doesn't go below minus 200 so that's why we are dividing by 2 same for the right wall top wall bottom wall so we are basically getting the maximum uh possible values of all of them okay so this will basically give you minus 200 200 uh 200 and minus 200 okay so th those are the values x comma y equals to caterpillar dot pos as as told in the last video as well dot pos will give you the position so the current position of the caterpillar will be given by x comma y 
Now, if you have a question like, okay, this is the caterpillar, which position? Because it goes from this much is thickness and this much is length. What is the actual point which you are saying that, okay, this pixel is uh, the caterpillar, this particular thing, okay? The reason for that is very simple. The reason is we are actually not checking if your tail has actually touched the window because your tail will only go in the direction your head has already been. So if your head has not hit something, your tail won't, won't hit it either. Okay. So when I say uh, X and Y coordinate, then this is the particular coordinate of the caterpillar that we are talking about. Now, outside, okay, this is a Boolean expression. So it will give me either true or a false. So this particular thing, all these hashes you can just ignore because when you code in uh, Jupyter Notebook, you will not actually have uh, this limited space. Okay. So what do you have to check for? X less than left wall. Okay. So X is less than, I mean, X is less than minus 200. So it has been like this. So if this is the screen, this condition check, if you have touched this screen, X is greater than the right wall. If you have touched this screen, X is less than the bottom wall. If you have touched this screen or X is greater than the top wall. So if any of these condition is met, since it's an odd situation, if one of them is true, the result will be true. So if you have hit any of the wall, you have hit the wall. If all of them are fall, you have not touched any of the wall, then only it will be outside. That is uh, inside that is false. So you return whatever uh, Boolean value you get. Okay. So if you just to show you once, uh, let's go back to the previous screen. Uh, just one second. Yeah. So in this particular screen, if you see, it's saying that if window outside, so window outside is just what we have defined. So if this particular situation is true, it will be true when I have hit a window. If true, game over. Okay. Else, let the game go. So that's exactly what's happening, right? So that much is clear. The same explanation has been given here. How does it work? Okay. Uh, then game over. Now we have to define how we would say that the game is over. As I told you earlier, uh, the background is already yellow. What we do, and this is one logic. You can try some other logics as well. Caterpillar dot color equals to yellow. So the caterpillar was red. It will become yellow indistinguishable. It will be basically invisible. Uh, leaf dot color equals to yellow. Leaf will be there. It will be also invisible. T dot pen up. T dot hide turtle. So everything is gone. T dot write. Okay. Game over. Align towards the center. So in the center, it will come in this particular font. So game over would be printed here. Okay. So this is how you are making the game uh, over. So the game over is basically everything will be yellow. So nothing would be visible and it will uh, jump on your screen that the game is over. Okay. So that's how we define the game over function. Let's move on to the next part. I think there are two or three more components left uh, here. So in this particular thing is uh, show the score. So this is uh, relatively easy. So show turtle dot clear. Okay. So whatever score was there initially, you clear that particular thing because else it will be 20 and then it will be 30. Then it will be 40 like that. So you clear out this particular thing, uh, this particular thing, then pen up. Okay. So you cleared out. Uh, it will be like, okay. Uh, let's say this is the situation. I'll try to draw it like this. Uh, clear so 20 was there so I ran the eraser clear and my pen was there so its pen is up okay now I will calculate the x and y okay so t dot window width by 2 okay minus 50 t dot window height by 2 minus 50 so this particular thing you already know will give you uh, 200 and this will give you 200 this will give you minus 50 so it's basically placed at 150 comma 150 okay so if this is your zero, so 150 will be close to here and 150 will be here. So your result will come somewhere here. If you want, you can put the score here, 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 wherever you like. Okay. So this particular thing is where your score is. So once we know where the score has to be located, then uh, score turtle dot set pause. Okay. And this is the most important function that you are going to learn here. Set pause is basically giving that. Okay. Set the position of this particular graphic score turtle. 2x comma y so it will go here okay x comma y and then uh, this particular thing score turtle dot write since we are typing something uh, str string version of the current score it will not take integers the input has to be string so we have casted that 
string of the current score okay so it's 20 it will convert to this 20 20 align this all those things are uh, just for the font how should it look so this is how you do okay so you first clear out the current score put, put your pens out calculate what is the location where you have to put the score and after that uh, score total dot set position go to that particular point and then write the current score okay now again current score is updated by somebody else you don't have to worry about that if you remember the current score has been updated in the uh, previous to previous function if you can see just a second you check uh, one second let's go a couple screen up if you remember this particular thing score has already been updated here okay so you don't have to worry about updating the score the score is updated you just have to worry about showing that so that's what I'm trying to explain it here that what happens with that function you don't have to worry you just have to define the function what happens has already been taken care of okay so I hope that much is clear 13 section done okay place leaf okay so place leaf is used when I have eaten the leaf and I need to produce a new one so this particular thing ht is basically high turtle shortcut so you can write high turtle ht so leaf dot high turtle leaf has vanished as soon as I eat something it should vanish again uh, set x set y at random dot int between this value okay so random dot rand int will give me a random integer value between these two okay so i will get a random integer value between these two things for x and y so i will have any position in this particular space okay i'll get a random position i i was here the snake ate me first thing which i did hide this thing so erased okay after that what I need to do I need to calculate the new position once this particular thing is done then set leaf set X and set Y okay here we used in the last thing I think it was set uh, what was it yeah set pause okay since we are calculating X and Y separately we can do it like this or you can have separate line for calculating X calculating Y and then set the leaf at that particular point both the code logics are fine okay after that leaf dot st that is show turtle so the leaf vanished from where it was it calculated its x and y coordinate its new x and y coordinate it went and it appeared okay that is exactly what the game wants us to do so that thing is taken care of now how do we turn the particular thing okay move up move down move left move, move right okay so far you have not used this but you will use these things when let's say i said that okay uh, i want to set this particular thing if you remember uh, we had a function which uh, gave us on key okay what action should I take and what key okay so what key so if you remember we did it for space to start the game right now we need to create functions which will do action on the caterpillar when we press this these buttons right so this is where these functions are going to be used now if I have to move something up I have to check one condition Let's say the snake is going in this direction or in this direction, then I can move it up, right? But if the snake is already going in this direction, will it work, right? So if I'm already going in down direction, I can't move up. If I'm going in up direction, I can't move up, okay? The thing is, if I say by random, if I say move up is basically 90 degree turn, okay? First of all, I need to check whether it's going left or right to make the right turn, okay? Even if let's say that particular thing is there, uh, if I already have fixed that okay 90 degree I only have to turn to go from this direction to this direction if I am here and I press move up without checking the condition if I am going up and I press up it will go me uh, it will take me this direction so to prevent those sort of mistakes if caterpillar heading towards 0 that is this 0 90 180 270 okay this is how the measurement is taken so if it is heading in this direction or heading in this direction then it makes sense to move up okay so set heading to 90 i'm not moving it i'm not turning it 90 uh, turning it by 90 degree i'm setting heading at 90 okay so at 90 90 degree is move upward move down if uh, caterpillar heading is zero it means it's going in this direction or in this direction then only it can so move to 270 okay uh, after that move left so I'm, I have to check if it is going in this or this direction that is 90 and 270 then it can go to 180 that is this direction if I have to move right then I have to set to 
to go in this direction so all those changes are given to you if you want to try it out this is the safest coding because you don't know what will happen if it is already going in this direction i ask it to go in the same direction if you want delete these things and see if your game works it may or may not depending on uh, total version that your computer has okay some of the versions actually can understand that if you are moving in uh, zero degree and i set the new zero degree uh, the set the degree as zero again it will not change anything but don't try to take that particular risk and the objective here is not actually just to build this game but to learn the practice okay this is the right practice you need to check the situation in which you can move up so these are the two situation you moving in this direction or this direction then only you can move up in these two directions it's not possible to move up okay so that now you have uh, decided how to move this particular thing and uh, this is the last thing that you have to do p dot on key okay this particular listen thing which was there and this on key which we have already done okay we did it listen run and then the main loop which will start the game uh t dot on key t dot on key t dot on key t dot on key move up if up button is type move down if right button is type move down if down move left if left okay so these left right buttons are already given in a keypad now this is all that's all there's nothing more that you can do one small thing some people have a practice of using w a s d okay this uh, this is used in the same way so w is sometimes used in front direction a in this direction s in this direction so what happens is some of the games allow this particular thing some of them don't now if you want to add this okay this is your game you have created it if you want to add this all you have to do is add one more option here p dot on key move up and mention here a okay or whatever the collective version for the letter a is if you make it a okay oh, not a for up it's w yeah w if you make it w then it will react going up for w else it will not similarly some people use 8 4 6 and 2 okay for moving up down uh, left right all those things right <clears throat> so now you know how it works so you can add uh, your own way okay if you want you can make four random things into up and down and left and right but it doesn't make sense so you you decide which button does what that's up to you now okay so this is all that you need to do in the description you can see that we have added two links first one first one is for this particular thing okay uh, that is basically giving you all the changes that you need uh, just one second here hacks and tweaks now if the game is working you can make certain changes some basic changes you, what you can make uh to make it a little more harder to change a few things here and there all those are mentioned here okay uh if you want you can take suggestions from them these are very basic hacks and tweaks if you want to change something which you think that you can create okay because you know a lot of things now okay you know how to uh, make a particular shape you know how to check if something has collided you know how to check if uh, this particular thing to disappear from here and reappear here okay so all those things there are time functions in turtle as well in python are there so you, it's not that you can only use turtle okay the python uh, stuff still works so you can check that okay run this particular thing for 10 seconds and if the snake can't eat it within 10 seconds disappear this and reappear it somewhere else so you are making the game now so you can decide all those components okay so use turtle use python and try to come up with a good variation to this game or if you want you can create that uh, for those who are using your final project in uh, game development itself you can make uh, the rex game yeah that's the name of the game the dinosaur game which keeps jumping that's the rex game you can make something like that or something that you like okay you can come up with your own story you can create actually a story a character and you can draw that particular thing because you have learned how to make your uh, robot you can put a little more effort since four people five people are making projects you can put a little more effort and you can make a new character okay so you can uh, make a character you can make a small tutorial sort of a game as well okay in which the user actually have like 3 uh, 4 5 uh, items of each category and the robot has to uh, go and to uh, click on the particular item or come close to the right answer okay you can make an adventure game out of this all of that will require a much longer set of code here but the key thing that you need to remember all of that happens with this much basics itself okay so game development is not hard and believe me a good game will actually uh teach you a lot more about designing basic systems and all those traps okay 
so look at their hacks and tweets and try to make your own uh, hope you have understood everything if you have not try to look for the documentation the code is attached in the okay yeah i have to show you the running code